Hey friends, hope you're having a great day wherever you are in this wonderful world. Um, it's just me this week. My mules are over there eating hay and uh, I wanted to talk about something a little different today. Um, I appreciate all you guys that have been following along with these everyday mulemanship challenges from the beginning. We're now on week number 20 and uh, you'll notice if you've been following along for the past 18 weeks, I have given you guys exercises and things to do with your mule, maneuvers, moves, etc. Uh, and if you recall, the very first week was just a commitment week. I wanted you guys to commit to working with your mules every day this year. That's why we called this challenge for 2020 our Everyday Mulemanship Challenge. I wanted you guys doing something with your mules every day this year. A lot of you have been doing that, and I am so grateful for those of you that have wrote in, sent me emails, messages, uh, texts, and calls about how much doing something with your mule every day has changed your relationship with your mule. That's what this is all about, is your relationship with your mule, because if you got a good relationship, you got things built there, you guys can get anything done, no matter your discipline or what you're trying to get done, you can do it. So I wanted to talk about two different pieces today and get you guys uh, thinking ahead for some of the stuff that we're gonna do coming up. The first thing I wanted to talk about though is doing the right thing, but maybe going about it the wrong way, which I think happens way too often. What I mean by that is you guys might have the right thing going. You might have the, you might be doing the right exercise or the correct maneuver at the time, but maybe you go about it the wrong way. Here's an example that I saw just recently. Maybe your mule gets upset about something and you're having a hard time, you're having a hard time getting it to go. In this situation that I want to talk about, they were having a hard time getting the mule to go where they wanted it to go. And uh, the mule had other ideas. The mule wanted to go over there and they wanted to go over there. So it was kind of a little bit of a bind up here. Now. The mule wasn't really with this person. The mule was, was off in the distance. Its mind was somewhere else. So the individual got off the mule and really started hustling the mule. Really started getting after it and working the mule over pretty good. Now, the human had gritted teeth and was really just ticked off about this whole situation. The human was really upset about this whole deal. And I don't blame him because I, I mean, it's, it is frustrating at times. And they got off and redirected that mule's feet, kind of moved the feet, rolled the hinds a few times and kind of got the groundwork pieces that they should have got done, done. They did it, okay. So they were doing the right thing. It's just how they went about it was the wrong way. You know, we're trying to get these mules with us. We're trying to get these mules to want to be where we want them to be. We don't want to punish them into doing what we want them to do. And that's what happens so often is we punish them. I saw, I was on a ride one time and, and I was working on turns. I was working on rolling the hind, rolling the front and the saddle. Lots of turns, the whole ride. It's just something I was working on with that mule that I was riding. And one of the guys on the ride said, how come you keep punishing that mule? And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you keep making it turn. And I was like, I'm not punishing it. We're just working on turns. Look at this mule. This mule loves me. The mule's just happy as can be. No worries. But that individual thought that just because I was doing some turns or working on some fundamentals that I was punishing that, that animal. And that's not, that wasn't the case. I was just working on, just working on exercises. So sometimes I think people think of these exercises that we're doing as punishments like the turns and the stops and these things but remember positive reinforcement is much more valuable than negative reinforcement so you want to be uh, rewarding these animals and building up their confidence not punishing them and taking away stripping the confidence that's really hard to do that's really hard to remember to do but anyways, sometimes you, you're doing the right thing, you're just going about it in the wrong way. So that's something I want you to think about this week is make sure that you're going about these things in the right way and um, 
making it making the mule a success, making the mule a winner. Um, this ne the next thing I want to talk about is even more important than that. Mulemanship mindfulness, being mindful with what you're doing and how you're doing it, being mindful in how you're living your life away from your mules. The way you are every day, um, it, it really affects how you are when you're working with your mules. That's another reason we call this everyday mulemanship, is because every day we should be practicing these fundamentals in our minds, practicing working with our mules and treating them this way in our minds. And uh, it's not always hugs and kisses and roses and perfect. It's sometimes it's challenging and it's tough. But it's how we deal with that situation and those things, how, how we are and what kind of human being we are away from our mules that really makes the difference. I found that working on myself and being a better person, trying to treat my wife better and trying to be a better father to my children, trying to be a better friend, trying to be a better servant to folks, and trying to help people more out, often outside of working with my mules helps me be a better person and helps me be a better rider and uh, helps me practice this mulemanship uh, more thoroughly when I'm with the animal. So that's my challenge to you guys this week is number one, think about how you're going about doing these things that are correct. So you might be doing the right thing, but you might be going about it the wrong way. Make sure you're not working with your mules with gritted teeth, okay? And my other challenge for you this week is to practice your everyday mulemanship outside of working with your mules. So whether you practice it at work, practice it at home, practice it with your family, with your friends. Try to be the best person you can be because the better the person you are, the better of a rider and the better you will be able to practice your mulemanship with your mule. So that's my challenge to you. Think about how you treat others. And, uh, you know, I did a Mule Tip Tuesday a few years back that's still one of my favorites that I share often. And if you guys are on on uh, social media, you might look it up. But uh, it, it was about making mulemanship a lifestyle. So it's not just when you're with your mules that you're practicing this mulemanship, but it's a lifestyle. It's how you, how you are. Everything from how you treat people to how you do things. You know, being lighter with your hands when you pick up on stuff. Opening a door. How, how heavy are you opening a door, slamming a door? Um, how quick are you to react or snap to somebody that frustrates you? You know, when you're talking to somebody, um, are you snappy to them or something? Or how calm can you stay in stressful situations? These will all help you with your mules. So anyways, that's my challenge for you guys this week is to work on those two things. And um, keep working on all the pieces I've given you so far. And just apply this mulemanship mindfulness to that. And uh, think about these things a little bit deeper. So anyways, hope you guys are doing great. Thank you for following along with these challenges. Let me know how things are going for you. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, and we will catch you next week. Thank you.